So we're looking at you know the topic on you know faith for divine provision, faith for supernatural provision. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're just gonna be having to look at let's go to the book of you know, um Exodus. Exodus chapter Exodus chapter sixteen. Exodus 16. We're talking about faith for supernatural provision. Faith for what? Supernatural provision. Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 16, yes. Uh, just to give us a bit of a background, you know, God brought out the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And in the process, they were on route to where? To the promised land, but they had to go through the wilderness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So while, while there, they faced a lot of you know, um, challenges, let me put it that way. And they had to sort of like, you know, they had to be dependent on, on, on God on the Lord for his you know, supernatural provision. And that's what, one of the things we want to look at you know, tonight. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So we're looking at faith for what? Supernatural what? Provision. Faith for what? Supernatural provision. Amen? So I'm going to read Exodus chapter 16. I'm going to read you know, from, verse, um, from verse 3. Exodus chapter 16, reading from verse 3. It says, And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. I'll read that last, the, last, uh, the last sentence that says, For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger hunger. Praise God. Now, let me give us a bit of a background, you know. In the wilderness, now the wilderness itself is basically a place of what? Dryness. Amen? Praise God. It's a place of dryness. It's a place of, you know, complete, it's a desert in, 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 uh, in fact. Nothing, nothing grows there. Nothing, you know, um, moves there. Nothing inhabits there at all. Only wild, only wild, you know, animals. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, now, such, such, such was the place where the children of Israel were, were a wilderness, a desert, because they were en route to where to the promised land. Praise the Lord. Now, in the wilderness, as we know, or in the deserts, as we know, there is no rain, uh, there is no vegetation, praise God. Uh, we, you don't have anything really, you know, growing in it at all. Um, you can, you have, you know, like, you know, the wilderness, or like in uh, the deserts, or the, call it a wilderness, so to speak. For instance, you know, you have the Sahara Desert, the other ones, again, you have as well, listen, you have, um, like in the, around the North Pole, for instance, yeah? the North Pole is just pure snow. Yeah, nothing really, you know, grows there, nothing at all. So it's just a, it's pure wilderness. Praise God. Hallelujah. So such is where, you know, the children of Israel were. And no source of water at all. No vegetation, nothing, nothing, no food at all. Now, God had to bring them to that particular, you know, took them through that particular place before taking them to where? To the promised land. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so we see that, you know, um, these guys were hungry. And they began to complain. They were hungry. And that was what, you know, was happening. A hungry man is what? Is an angry man. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, they were complaining to Moses and Let's, if we read that place again, verse 3 of that, you know, Exodus 16, it says, Oh, that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat, and when we ate bread to the full. 
For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Praise God. Verse 4 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain quota every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. Verse 5, And it shall be on the sixth day that they shall prepare what they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Then Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening you shall know that the Lord has brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. For he hears your complaints against the Lord. But what are we that you complain against us? Also, Moses said, This shall be seen when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to the full. For the Lord hears your complaints which you make against him, and what are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Verse 9, it says, Then Moses spoke to Aaron, Say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your complaints. Verse 10, it says, Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Verse 11, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Verse 13, So it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted there, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said, one, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is a bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Praise God. Hallelujah. Supernatural what? provision. Amen. Now, there was a reason why, you know, God, if we look at, you know, um, if we look at, what's it called now, verse chapter 13 of Exodus from 17 to 18, you know, one of the reasons why God had to take them, you know, through the wilderness is that, you know, the Bible says, you know, in verse, um, chapter 13, verse 17 to 18, it says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines. Although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of what? Of Egypt. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I mean, I'm, let's just try to imagine here that in the wilderness, there was just no... No, no source of provision at all. No rain. <laughs> Everywhere is dry. It's just dryness all over the place. Dryness. And yet, this is where the Lord had brought where, his people to. Now, any you know, normal person will think, hey, man, you're bringing us into this particular place. How far? What's the provision? How are we going to eat? What are we going to, how, how are we going to, where is the water going to come from? Praise the Lord. It wasn't like, you know, they had come with wagons of, you know, full stuff. Now, again, we need to understand, you know, you know the number of the, of the children of, of the Israelites. The Bible talks about, you know, in the book of, you know, Exodus, you know, chapter, uh, chapter 12. Let's, let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, I'll read verse 37 to 38. Exodus chapter 12, 37 to 38. It says, um, 
I'm going to read from the Amplified Inner Version. It says that the Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. And a mixed what multitude went also with them, and very much livestock, both flocks and herds. Now, if you want to calculate that, 600,000 footmen, because at the time, you know, it was men, they used to count them, you know, people over the age of 20. Over the age of 20, that's mostly men, are the ones that are mostly, you know, counted, praise God, especially for war. 600,000, the Bible says, were there. Now, again, if we calculate and consider that, you know, there were more, obviously more women, you know, than men, all right? And we look at the ratio of, say, for instance, you know, one man to 1.5, you know, women. You understand? Not necessarily one to two women. Maybe say one point, let's say conservatively 1.5 women. So you can imagine that, you know, there were over, so if you have 600,000 men, you probably have another maybe 1.5, you know, times that, that's under 900,000 women. So you're looking at already, you know, a figure of about 1.5 million just adults. Now, children under the age of 20, now you multiply that at least, let's say, you know, for each Israelite, uh, they probably have maybe, you know, three kids, because these guys were pretty, they were just, you know, they were, they were, they were, they were fruitful. Let me put let me put that here. They were very very fruitful. Praise God, because they were fulfilling the commit. You know what? You know, the Lord has said, be fruitful and what and multiply. So they were really really multiplying. Praise God. So you can see that you know in the wilderness there amongst them there were almost about if not over three million people. Praise the Lord in the wilderness. Now, can you imagine carrying three million people? Praise God. Three million people, not two, not two, two even in their, even in their family, you know, three is enough to give, you know, people, you know, problems. Let alone you are carrying three million people. <laughs> Praise God. Now, now, and these people, you know, were being carried by the Lord Himself. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It, it's, it's really, really amazing to see that um, in the wilderness. God still provided for them. Praise God. It's just, you know, I mean, I've been meditating on this you know, for the last you know, one week, and it doesn't really, it doesn't make sense. That you be, how? For three million people in the wilderness, there is no drop of rain, there is no body of water or source of water, there is no form of vegetation there, it's all pure dryness. Yet, God provided for them. Hallelujah. It is beyond human comprehension. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the desert. <laughs> now, I mean, when, when you think about it, you say, how can one lead such a great multitude into the desert? A place where there's no water or source of food at all. No trees. No crops at all. They can at least say, okay, well, we can plant some things here. And hopefully, you know, get them, you know, harvested because they were mostly having to move, you know, from time to time. The Lord will ask them to move, they will move. So there's really nothing for them to harvest. Praise God. So it's not really practical at all. So on such a time, you know, when, you know, they were hit, you know, by hunger, I mean, they, they reacted. They complained to Moses. They complained and they complained, you know, the Bible says, you know, came to the ears of the Lord. And the Lord, you know, said to them, listen. You will have, you know, meat to eat, and you will have what bread to eat as well. Praise God. Now, how can you explain, as we read in, in Exodus in the chapter 16, that quails came from nowhere? Quails, praise God, came from what? Nowhere. And quails are not, you know, are not, um, quails are not better flight, you know. Quails. They're not better. They're not better of flight. They don't fly far. It's just like just like these quails are just like chicken. A chicken, a chicken can, does not fly. All right. Say so you can fly maybe to a no. Quails are not better of flight. So where did the quails come from? <laughs> Praise God. 
Amen. And again, you know, from uh, you know studies as well, you know, the you know of, of all the birds of, of all birds, quills are the highest, you know, when it comes to protein. They have the highest, you know, you know, very nutritious. See, so God was really, you know, really looking after them properly, you know, giving them some very nutritious, you know, <laughs> uh, food. So quail, the Bible says, you know, quails came what that day. Amen. Let's look at that, you know, verse, you know, um, that Exodus chapter 16 again. Exodus chapter what? Chapter 16. First of all, let me just you know, say this, that, that God took responsibility for provide, he took the responsibility of providing what for them because he was the one that brought them out of Egypt into the what? Into the wilderness. Praise the Lord. So God took responsibility for them. Amen. He took care of them. Now, let's look at that. Let's, I'm going to read again from that Exodus chapter 16, verse 10 to 15. It says, Now it came to pass, as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall have... You shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Hmm. He says, that, and you shall know that I am what the Lord. He said, in the he said, in at twilight, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am what. The Lord your God. That's a powerful statement. I am the Lord your God. Praise God. So it was that quails came up at evening and covered the camp. And in the morning the dew lay all around the camp. And when the layer of dew lifted there, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as frost on the ground. So when the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. Now the Israelites were in, where? They were in the wilderness where they had to depend on God. You see, you know, I believe, you know, that you know, God brought them to that place so that they would be dependent totally on him. Praise God. Totally. From a people who have been used to, you know, their flesh pots, as they say, the leeks uh, and the melons and the leeks and the onions, the cucumbers and everything that they were used to in Egypt, all of a sudden, even though it's in hard labor, in slavery, God brought them out of that place, you know, into taking them to the promised land. Praise God. Yet, so what God was teaching them was what total was dependence on who? On him. Praise God. Now, we find ourselves in that situation, you know, sometimes, most times, even currently. And we have to depend totally on him. Because the same God who provided not just two days, not three days, but for how many years? For 40 good years. The Lord provided for these people. He provided, you know what? Food for them. He provided what? Water for them as well. Praise God. As we will see. Now, 40 long years. 40 long years. And that is amazing. Praise God. It's amazing. Now, if we look at, you know, Exodus chapter 17. We look at Exodus chapter 17. Because when they were thirsty. Obviously, in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a wilderness, there is no source of water at all. So, of course, they are thirsty. They need their water. And you can't blame them. Three million people. Three million people. How many of them? None of them will have faith in God. Even at that, they will be tested to the, you know, beyond you know, their own uh, limits. The three million people were thirsty for, what? for water. And they responded by, again... Contending with Moses. Let's read. I'm going to read from Exodus chapter 17, verse 2 to 6. It says, Therefore, 
The people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. So Moses said to, said to them, Why do you contend with me? Why do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why is it you have brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, saying, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Go, go on before the people and take with you some of the elders of Israel. Also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb, and you shall strike the rock and water will come out of it that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Praise God. Again, they were thirsty, they needed water. So where can they get water from? In a wilderness, in a desert. It's not practical. There's no way. There's no, pop. There's no river. There is no stream here. But God, who took them there, made a provision, brought water out of what? Of a rock. Which is not practical. It's not possible. But God did it. Praise God. So, in other words, what are we seeing here? God supernaturally provided for his people. Praise God. He supernaturally did what provided for them. For 40 years he did it. And he is the same God who is providing and will provide for as many as put their faith and their total trust in him. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the Lord is still doing it. As he did it for the children of Israel thousands of years ago. The scripture is for us because we learn from the scripture. And we, our faith grows through the study of God's word, through scripture. Praise God. As the Lord did it for them. So the Lord is doing it for us as well, and he will do it for us continually in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God supernaturally provided for them. How, I mean, there is no science, you know, you can't, prove, you can't produce water out of a rock. Is it possible? No. You can't. Praise God. So, but God, you know, who created the rock, brought water out of it. So God will bring water, he will bring, he will make provision for us from strange sources in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, I'm just going to read uh, the book of you know, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. I'll read from verse 1. Very powerful uh, topic reading again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 1. It says, Every commandment I command you today, you must be careful to observe, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what it was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Look at verse 4. It says, Your garments did not wear out, on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Ah, amazing, powerful. <laughs> so as they as they grew, the clothes grew with them. <laughs> now, I've never seen such kind of designer designer outfit at all. Whether it's Jeju Armani or Gucci, there's no, there's no such designer that can ever, you know, stretch 
as the person grows, he continues to grow with it. Praise God. Amen? I don't know, have you heard of such at all? No. He says that your foot, your foot, nor did your foot what swell these 40 years. Walking in the wilderness, walking in the hot sun, everything, yet their foot did not swell. There's another place in scripture as well, um, where it talks about, it says that your sandals did not wear out as well. Your sandals did not do what? It did not wear out. Praise God. I think that's in Deuteronomy chapter 29. I think it's Deuteronomy 29, 5. Let me look. Yeah, I think, yes, Deuteronomy 29, 5. Praise God. I'll look for it now. Yeah. It says, I read from verse 4. It says, Yet, Deuteronomy 29, verse 4, it says, Yet the Lord has given you a heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear to this very day. Verse 5 says, And I have led you 40 years in the wilderness. Your clothes have not worn out on you, and your sandals have not worn out on you. You have, not, you have not eaten bread, nor have you drunk wine or similar drink that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so when you talk about you know, God's supernatural provision, it's beyond man's comprehension. Praise God. But God supernaturally provided for his people. He provided them with clothing. He provided them with food. He provided them with water as well. Praise God. And not just that, you know, there's, you know, somewhere in the book of, you know, Psalm, it says that there was none was, was feeble amongst them. You know, that was, there was no NHS there. There was no medical doctor, but the great physician was what? Was with them. That right, the Bible says that what none was, there was none feeble what amongst them. Praise God. This is the, you know, so because they were, these are the covenant people of God. Now, because we as well are covenant, what? children of God, then the same applies to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, as God led them through what? Through the wilderness. Now, there's another place again in scripture where it talks about, it says that, you know, because in the deserts, in the desert place, especially in the wilderness there, what you mostly see, you know, especially, you know, where you have the hot sun, what you mostly see are, you know, snakes. The Bible talks about, you no, know, they were fiery serpents. Fiery what? Serpents. And yet, the fiery serpents did not touch them. All true. It was only when they disobeyed and the Lord sent you know, those you know, fiery serpents. Those fiery serpents are, they are, they are you know, indigenous to that particular you know, area. Praise God. Hallelujah. Those serpents are indigenous you know, snakes. You have there certain kind of, you know, rat, certain snakes that are found mostly in the, in the, in the, in the hot sun, in the desert. Very fast. They're very, very fast. But none of them, you know, touched them at all. Praise God. So God provided for them, protected them, gave them perfect health all 40 years. And the same God is still at work today as many of us as depend what? On Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, you know, that, you know, He was the shepherd. The Bible says, you no, know, oh, shepherd of Israel. I call him what? Shepherd of Israel. He led his people what? As a flock in the what? In the wilderness. He provided for them. And you know, just the other day I was you know, praying. And this scripture just it, it came into my spirit, man, just heavily. It says in you know, Psalm 23, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Wow. I began to pray with that. I shall not want. I shall not what want. We have to stand on God's word and proclaim scripture. Listen, the Bible says that for we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes, you may not have anything in your fridge. Yes, you may not have anything in your bank account. But it is not by the time that like what we see, you know, with your naked eyes that, you know, so to speak, reality is telling you. No, the Bible says that for we walk by faith. Faith in what in God's word. The Bible says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am what I am rich. So I am rich already in Jesus' name. That is what the word of God says. So we stand on God's word. We depend, we, we speak the word of God. Even, listen, it's, it is in the midst of such crisis situations that you need to stand on God's word. Praise God. 
Now, one of the things, you know, the Bible says that God fed them with manna. It says, and he fed you with manna to do what? To humble you. Let's go back to that Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Praise God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. It says, so he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and fed you with what? With manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by what? By bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Praise God. What does that tell us? We have to depend on his word. Faith in what? In his word. Faith in what? In God's word. Not in, yes, you, it, but it is faith in what? In God's word. We are to live by faith in his word. Praise the Lord. We are to constantly depend on him through his word. We have to constantly, listen, the more we, you see, the more you, the more you talk about your problems, the more you are magnifying the problems over above God. But the more you talk about God, and that is one of the reasons why the Lord has been you know, leading us you know, in this, you know, this series of you know, teachings, you know, these messages. is faith in, the, in his miracle, in his miracle working power. Praise God. And then we see what, we see those things you know, coming to pass. Because God is being magnified. God is being glorified even in his word. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Again, you know, God fed them with what? With manna. He provided for them. Everything that they needed, God provided. Everything that was needed at the time, God did what? He provided. The same God will provide and will meet each one, everyone that depends on him, meet each one at their various points of need in the name of Jesus Christ. Because he is that God. Now, one of the things that came to mind you know, just over during the week was, have you ever seen a sheep following a shepherd that is malnourished? Have you ever seen a sheep following a shepherd that is now malnourished? No. Because the, 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 the job of the, of, the, of the shepherd is to take the sheep, is to take the flock where into green what? Pastures, and that is why you know Psalm 23 says, you know, that he maketh me lie down what in green pastures. In green what pastures? That means there is so much abundance to eat there. So when the shepherd is leading you, he's leading you towards green pastures, he's providing for you. That's what it means. Praise the Lord. So you are not in life. So it's only when the sheep has Straight away from the shepherd or from the flock. Praise the Lord. Then he is now left to fend for himself. And in the process, it can also be devoured by what? By a lion or a wolf or a wild, you know, uh, animal. Praise God. And that is why, you know, the Lord, you know, clearly, you know, showed it to me. He says, you know, that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want all true. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, the Lord was their, what, was their shepherd. He was the shepherd of Israel. Praise God. So God is saying to us today that as he led the people of, oh, the people of Israel for 40 long years, none was feeble, none was sick, none, you know, was, uh, what, you know, uh, uh, was, was hungry. Rather, they had abundance abundance more than they could even you know ask for praise god so you will not lack in jesus name Amen. we shall not lack in jesus mighty name Amen. why because the shepherd of israel you know is with us praise god now the new testament also talks about it you know you know first peter i think first peter chapter 2 verse 25 it talks about you know that you know uh it says some of you you know were astray as sheep but have now returned to the bishop an overseer of our souls. Praise the Lord. To the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Praise God. So Jesus is the bishop of our souls. 
He's the shepherd of our soul. Praise God. And because we are following who? The shepherd. Who? Jesus Christ. We shall not lack at all in Jesus' name. Praise God. So it is a supernatural word provision. Amen. Hallelujah. When it is needed, it is a supernatural provision. It says you will not lack. You will not do what you will not lack. I think in the book of you know, Psalm chapter 34, it says, you know, that uh, it says the lions lack and suffer hunger, but they that fear the Lord shall not lack any good thing. He will not lack any good thing. Praise God. Psalm chapter 34, verse 5 as well says, And they looked unto him, and were what? And were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. Praise God. That is God's word. We, you see, it says that no man shall not live by bread. It says he humbled you, he fed you with manna, which your father, which you knew not, none did your father know, so that you would understand that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And what is the word? It is his word, the scriptures. As we stand on it, we meditate on it day and night, day and night, and we declare it, and we see it what happen in our lives. We see the supernatural provision of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So many times, so many times, I have had, you know, such situations in my own life, personally, and God, you know, provides. God would meet me at, my own, at the time of need that is needed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that is just, you know, something that, you know, God is just, you know, wanting for us to understand that he is, as he led the children of Israel in the wilderness and provided for them, so the Lord is also providing for us as well in Jesus' name. As we depend totally on him, completely on him, we shall see the supernatural provision of God in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember that, you know, the Bible says, you know, that they are clothed, they are clothed, their garments did not wear out. Their raiment. Neither did their, their, their sandals wear out. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, the same God provides for us. The same God provides everything that we need. Is it clothing? Is it shoe? Whatever. God has already provided in Jesus' name. Because we are, we are Abraham's God seed. Amen. Praise the Lord. As we meditate on the scriptures, as we stand on scripture, not on what we see. Again, I just want to reiterate what God's word says. It says that for we walk by faith and not by what? Not by sight. We need to remind ourselves of this every day. It is faith in what? Faith in what? Faith in God's word. Because situations will change, but God's word would never what? Change. Praise God. And that is why it is best to put faith in God's word than, you know, looking at the situation and allowing the situation to trouble us, you know, and we, 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 we become anxious, distressed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, there's a scripture that, you know, um, I always um, pray with, and I just remember that scripture each time. Or the Lord you know, used to speak to me recently. It's Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear not. Isaiah 41, 10. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. It says, I will, help, I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Ah, praise God. I mean, recently I have been praying with that scripture and I'm like, what? I said, listen, I said, Satan, listen, the, last, that, the, last, the, last, the last bit of that scripture says, I would uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. And I now made a confession of it. I said, Satan, until, unless you can cut off God's right hand of righteousness that is upholding me, then you cannot hold, you can't get me. Praise God. Until the devil can cut off God's righteous right hand that is upholding me, 
then you can then have your way. But if you cannot cut off the hand of God, <laughs> the righteous right hand of God that is holding me, then you have no power over my life. Nothing. No situation has power over what? Over my life. Why? Because the one who upholds me with his righteous right hand is my heavenly father. Is God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> You know, just this morning, as we're you know, as we're praying, you know, for the start of the of, of the of the of the days in the work, I mean, it just you know came to mind. I said, like you know, wow, the God who holds the earth, suspends the earth, right, in space, in space, suspends the earth in space. <laughs> that's 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 another that's a topic for another day. Praise God. He, 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 he suspends the earth, the earth, as big as he suspends it in space. And it's in the same spot. Praise the Lord. He is, he, he is your God. He is our God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, that Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, it says, you know, it says, Fear not. You put your name there. It says, What well, fear not, Clifford, for I am with you. Praise the Lord. The word I am is, that, I mean, he, he called himself, he says, I am. After he said to Moses, Moses said to him, Who shall I tell the children of Israel? He said, He says, I am. He says, For I am with you. That's his presence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Supernatural presence. His soup is presence that makes every provision for you. Praise the Lord. I am with you. Amen. Hallelujah. So, again, I just want us to please remember that God's presence is activated by faith. And as we stand on faith in His Word, we will see the miraculous happening in our lives daily in Jesus' name. So, amen.